The Dallas Cowboys need a Hail Mary on their season, and the NFC North and West are going to go down to the end of the season for their division battles. Time to get ready for today's NFC squad. You are talking ball with the NFC squad. From the Cowboys to the Packers, the Falcons to the 49ers, and everyone else around the NFC, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming weekend for hard-hitting NFC football with our harder-hitting take. Buckle up, it's the NFC squad and we have a seat for you. No hurt feelings allowed. Squad up, you're part of the NFC and squad. And welcome in to this week's NFC squad episode. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get ready for another wild week across the the NFC. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. New customers, you place a $5 bet, and if you win, you'll get $150 in bonus bets from FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com to get started today. Joining us for this round of NFC squad, we've got Gino Camilleri and Louis DiBiase of Locked On Eagles continuing to try to get two Locked On Eagles shoutouts in the intro, continuing to fail just like, well, not the Eagles, actually, just like the Dallas Cowboys do. Brian Peacock of Locked On 49ers holding the NFC West down. Aaron Freeman of Locked On Falcons holding down the NFC South. I see James Yarko is not here to take his mm. NFC South mm. medicine this week. Landon McCool bringing up, not the tail end, but close to the tail end of the NFC East for us, the Locked On Cowboys. And Peter Bukowski here on time. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Peter Bukowski. Locked On Packers on well time. Don't get uh, used to it. Just in time to talk about uh, the best game that happened in the NFC this last weekend. Number one overall pick, number two overall pick, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels going at it in the mid-afternoon schedule just like the NFL wanted to happen all along. And, of course, the game would end on a Hail Mary. And, guys, I got to tell you, I don't know who watched this game in real time, but I watched the broadcast. Obviously, I'm in the press box. So I watched the broadcast after I got home that night, and I counted about five or six times that the broadcast mentioned Hail Marys during the broadcast just for that game mm. to go down. On a hail mary, I thought it was kind hmm. of it was kind of weird. But Aaron Freeman, let's let's start with you, uh, good buddy. And and what do you what did you think of the hail mary pass as you saw it? Whenever you did see it, and what do you think the total ramifications are across football for a play like this to happen with these two young quarterbacks in this scenario? Well, it, it's funny to talk about an eighteen fifteen game as a, sort of a compelling watch in the NFL, but. Yeah. I, I was I was locked and loaded for my week eight Cliff Kingsbury takes of a hey, you know after week eight Cliff Kingsbury takes a downward turn given the struggles of Washington's offense in that game and then of course you know Jaden Daniels and Noah Brown were able to pull out that magic at the end and certainly Tyreek Stevenson you know mm. he is going mm. to be Wolf. glorified in the city of Chicago mm. for the rest of eternity so uh, he just got to keep his head down and hope he gets traded because that fan base will never <laughs> forgive him. I understand how fans operate. They will never forgive him uh, for that one on that one. So it was, it was an incredible finish to this game. And, and certainly as we have been discussing the last couple of weeks, you know, Jaden Daniels helping out his MVP chances. And that was kind of an yeah. MVP moment for him uh, in this uh, game. So a, a big win for Washington and Jaden Daniels and, and a big loss for my anti cliff Kingsbury narrative. What did you guys think of, of, Matt Eberflus throwing Tarek Stevenson. Not, I wouldn't say he threw him under the bus, but he yeah. explicitly said, yeah, that was his guy. Like he screwed that up, which right. was the speculation. I, I saw a lot of people tweet out like, hey, in, in that sort of defensive coverage, the classic version of it is that guy mm -hmm. has to have the tip. And Matty Eberflus, who, by the way, a number of other Bears players over the course of the week was like, yeah, I don't know about some the X decision. I don't know about this timeout. I don't know about this substitution. There seems to be some discord in that locker room. Yeah. It doesn't seem like everyone is locked in or locked on, if we're going to be on brand, mm -hmm. with nice, what nice. Matty Eberflus is doing. That seems like a bad situation right now, especially when you're trying to do everything you can to help Caleb Williams. I was going to say, Eberflus yeah. has no right to call. And he's correct, technically. But considering every wrong decision that he made in those final few minutes, including like before that drive, allowing his offense to hand the ball off to a lineman with the game Oof. on the line, Oof. having TJ Edwards QB spy Jaden Daniels on the last play. Like, I'm sorry, he has no right yeah. to say anything. I got Montez I got to Sweat not on the field for that Hail Mary play. Best pass exactly. rusher not on the field crazy. to rush the Washington Commanders quarterback it's right crazy. at the Washington Commanders logo to wrap up a game. I mean, come on, dude. How do you not give Montez Sweat that opportunity? I, I, I couldn't believe that. You know, I was sitting there watching this, and, and when it happened, you know, the first thing I thought was, 
man, Steve Bartman sitting somewhere in a Chicago apartment, just literally <laughs> crying tears of joy that, that, that he finally is off the hook for all these years. <laughs> uh, uh, that was just, it was unbelievable to watch in real time. And, and, and as a, uh, as someone who's a, been a Noah Brown fan for a long time, I, I really mm. was just, I could not have been more thrilled that it people was were Brown comparing that, that play to the double doink to, mm -hmm. to the Rogers to Cobb at the mm -hmm. end of the 20, the 2013 season. I think that was mm -hmm. like the, the most gut wrenching moments in the last 20 years of bears history. It is right now it's on the Mount Rushmore that play. And, and that speaks a lot to where ba bears fans are right now. Like I had a bears fan text me that was like, this is the second most traumatic Bears moment of my lifetime. And he's 40 years old. Like that is, that's tough. That's, I was going to say, well, real quick, let's cried. talk about the, the, the <laughs> overall like season long, you know, ramifications from this, because I, I think David brought up an interesting point is that this is the kind of thing that launched. I mean, I hate to say this as a Cowboys fan, but this is the kind of thing that launches a team team's confidence in the stratosphere, a team that is performing yeah. well, that uh, is, is is about to kind of get off track and lose, and then somehow to pull victory out of the jaws of defeat. Uh, that That's the kind of thing that usually teams can start to really take their games to the next level or elevate themselves you know, going into the back half of the season. I had to make sure. I, I mean, mean, I just looked as we were talking media. about this. Like the, I had to check that Matt Everfus was married. He is, in fact, married. Yes. But I would have thought any married man would know that, to, to Louis' point, being technically correct, does not give you the moral high right. ground. Please not, understand. And I, right. I would have thought that he would have known that. I would have thought he would well, have known that. But apparently his wife is verbose too on social media. So I'm uh, sure yes. he has argued well, quite say, a bit with her at home as well. Does he not know the saying happy wife, happy wife? I mean, apparently not. <laughs> yeah. What's the Listen, saying? Guys, happy Tyree after, Stevenson. I don't know. After a play like that, fans and media are known for kind of talking about like manifest destiny. This is a team of, you know, this is just, they're just following the path of, you know, or, or the NFL script, of course, always comes into play as well. But look, guys in that locker room, especially guys who have been on this commander's roster for a couple of years, have said like, this is what happens to good teams. When you're good, when you're yep. prepared, when you're coached mm -hmm. well, when your mindset yep. is right, these are the types of things that happen. They look like luck, but they really are manifested in the preparation. And of course, we've talked a lot about that on Locked On Commander. So if you want more on that, Go to Locked On Commander, selfish plug there. But the question now Aaron, coming out of it. What's your experience with that with uh, Dan Quinn? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what. Mm -hmm. So so let's get to this real quick. Aaron <laughs> Freeman, super happy you brought up the MVP stuff because Peter Bukowski, I literally quoted you in an SI article about your take on Jane Daniels as mm -hmm. an MVP. So I love you for dropping that for me. But but <laughs> but Brian Peacock, Locked On 49ers, you're on the other side of this, of the coast on this, of this conversation. But I want to know, where do you rank where do you rate after what you just saw this last weekend and from the entire season truthfully with the commander's chances of winning the nfc east division this season yeah the sun's still out over here on the west coast guys um oh, come we, on this the guy. commanders uh i keep waiting for the falter and it's like no are they are they good enough on defense to keep winning these games even if they've hit a home run at quarterback and Jaden daniels and they just keep winning and you got to believe at some point. So I, I fully believe in what the Washington Commanders are doing right now, even though I'm still kind of squinting at, at Cliff Kingsbury and Dan Quinn is like, really, is this the group that's going to get this done? They're that good. Um, but they're creating, they're playing great ball. They're creating their own luck, as you guys mentioned. And um, of course, above all, the Commanders, they, they owe it all to the San Francisco 49ers who gave them Adam mm. Peters. Who not only okay. selected okay. Jaden Daniels number one, but had PFF's highest graded player, their second round pick this week for the commanders, Johnny Newton, who's over his foot yeah. injuries, yeah. and he looked phenomenal out there. Um, I mean, top down, they're building a culture, they're building a, a great squad. I, I, I've got to be a full on believer what the commanders are doing right now. Absolutely. So NFC squad official take. Make sure everybody takes note of who all is in 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 present in, in attendance here for this episode. Washington Commanders, hands down, going to win the NFC East Division. So glad we have those takes. Wow. We're going to talk about the other Dang. three and as don't roll your eyes. Dang. The other three NFC Cowboys. divisions are going to get involved in this conversation <laughs> coming up next on today's episode of NFC Squad, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Rewards. And look, we've all been there feeling like we're burning cash with those rent checks. It's frustrating, isn't it? But here's the deal. Built Rewards has figured out a way to make rent more rewarding. Say goodbye to the money bonfire and hello to a renter's revolution with Built. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use those points to jet off on a dream vacation. Maybe you put them towards a flight or hotel. Uh, with 500 plus airlines, 700,000 plus hotel and property options. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, 
redeem them towards a future rent payment. They're designed to meet your lifestyle. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Bill points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the point guys and bank rates. So earn points by paying rent now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL. That's J O I N B I L T dot com slash locked on NFL. Make sure to use our URL so they know that we sent you joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL to start earning points with your rent payments today. Continuing now today's episode of NFC Squad, this week's episode of NFC, NFC Squad, we've been talking about the NFC East division leading Washington Commanders. We all agree that the Washington Commanders are going to run away with this division <laughs> as nope. early as next week as the New York Giants play host to the eventual NFC East champions. Patricia Traina ducking me on this episode this week. She'll have to answer to me anyway in the crossover <laughs> Thursday episode. Come up there this week. Make sure you guys check that out. But guys, let's stick in the NFC North real quick. Uh, Lauren Cox. Covering the Chicago Bears, do a great job for Locked On Bears. Make sure you guys go check that out. But the question now is, is this now a three? Is this officially a three-team race in the NFC North? Because the Chicago Bears are still mathematically well within it, right? Four and three. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are five and two. Green Bay, six and two. Detroit, six and one. So mathematically, they're still in it. But their four wins have come from teams that are either at the bottom of their division or in the bottom half of their division. They've beaten the worst two teams so far in the AFC South. And their losses have come against teams that are in the upper half of their divisions, the two top teams in the AFC South, and of course the NFC East division leading Washington Commanders. So that's the last time I'll do that, I swear. Um, I so are the Chicago it. Bears officially added this thing in your perspective? Gino Camilleri, locked on Eagles. What do you think? I would have to say that when you saw the ball fall into the hands of Noah Brown, mm. you saw one team break a curse it felt like a breath of fresh air that mm. they were in for a new day and that is the washington commanders and you saw another team fall into the same well that they've fallen into a hundred times and even though you have a sign that says watch out for the well they fell into the same freaking well and that's the chicago bears you've seen it before and i think this was the ultimate shoot yourself in the foot moment for them they're a year ahead of schedule for sure they've had some impressive wins but when mm. you're in a division that has Detroit, who was at the precipice last year. You have Green Bay, who is probably right on schedule, if not ahead of schedule in turning things around there. And then look at Minnesota. They go out. They trade for a left tackle with Darisaw oh. out for the season. It's a three-team race. No disrespect to Chicago outside of they truly are cursed. And yeah, you said it. Bartman. Thank goodness Tyreek Stevenson's name is now in Chicago because he has broken your curse. Just like Lou broke my curse, he now took the Camillary curse from me. It's the DiBiase curse. He's been on one this year over at Locked On Eagles. Locked On Packers host Peter Rakowski. We, got, we obviously have to get your opinion on this, man. So the Chicago Bears also have not faced any NFC North opponents this year so far. Now, I know the Minnesota Vikings have fallen off over the last couple of weeks. They still got the Packers to come up. They still got the Lions to come up. My question to you is not so much are the Chicago Bears a, a legit competitor in the NFC North for the for the division title. My question to you is, do you think the Bears can reasonably finish above 500 given the schedule they have ahead of them? You know, I was just having this conversation with the aforementioned Bears fan friend in my life, and I said, I think this is a team that is going to finish with eight or nine wins, and they're going to be a really nice story. But the the Bears fans, this is this is, I mean, it is the classic Han Solo. Like I, I'm out of it for for a little while, and everyone starts getting delusions of grandeur. Like they mm -hmm. they are they have the shortest memory in the, in sports. I don't under, every every spring they go, we're so back, um, and and every October it's so over. Like for 30 years, this has been the cycle that Bears fans are in. The, the Bears part of this to me is not even a question. And and Lauren Cox maybe one day will will man up and be on this show. But uh, an answer for for the crimes that his fan base has committed. But <laughs> the the question that I'm wondering is not are the Bears is this no longer a four team race? It was never a four team race. Are mm. we sure it's actually a three team race with the way the Minnesota Vikings That's have looked over the say. last couple of weeks? Sam Darnold is going to turn into, it is fall after all, he's going to turn into a pumpkin sooner rather than later. I'm sure Aaron has a, a pithy um, month related nickname that we can get for Sam here shortly. And I just like, we saw this last year with this Vikings defense. They're like, they got figured out in the middle of last season. And at the end of last season, like we saw Ben Johnson and Zach Taylor and, and Matt LaFleur and the best teams, the best offensive minds that they faced 
lit them up even in the game where they were blowing the doors off the Packers. Green Bay scored 29 unanswered points in the second half of that football game. Like, I, I think there are real ways. We saw Jared Goff have every answer to every Brian Flores punch. Ben Johnson had a counter punch. I'm just wondering if we're at the point now where like, okay, all that cutesy stuff has, has okay, we, we've seen it. That's cool. You've done all that great stuff. But at a certain point, you need the dudes. You need the horses. And I'm wondering if the same thing is going to happen eventually with this Eagles defense. I'm not take, trying to take any shots. I'm just wondering. Where did that come frankly, from? No, no, no. What was that straight? That listen, was so unnecessary. Listen, we listen, can talk about Malik Willis being the best quarterback listen, on your football team if we want to go that route, Peter. Listen, that was so I'm, unnecessary. Let me let me finish. <laughs> I want to see that they have the – I want to see that Quinny Mitchell, Quinny Mitchell and Cooper DeGene are guys. I think they can be. If you would have let me finish, Ask I would have said Chase that. Hasn't, hasn't watched a second of an Eagles game. I would have said that. I want to see it. I want to see it over the course of a season. I want to see that they have the guys. I think Vic Fangio is a great coach. You need to have the guys. Mm -hmm. Brian Flores, I don't think has the guys. And, and so that's, that's ultimately what happens. Like, I think, I think in San Francisco, we've got a similar situation going on. Like they just don't have the horses right now. I, I don't know that anyone on this call, frankly, has a defense that has the horses. Um, with all due respect to everyone in this room. Oh, are you sure? I'm, I'm here with the Cowboys. Are you sure that we don't have the horses? <laughs> well, they, they might have that horses. we can all but, confirm. <laughs> but, but they need to be put out to pasture. That's a different set of horses that we need to deal with here. So that I, all I'm saying is I, I'm not sure that the, that when, when we get to the end of the season, we're going to be talking about the Minnesota Vikings as an NFC North, true NFC North contender. They're going to be a good team, a playoff team potentially, but like they were never a great undefeated team. I just like the... the you got to have the talent and it's going to be found out at some point. Yeah. So speaking of, of the San Francisco 49ers, Brian Peacock locked on 49ers is here. And we need, we need to talk about this NFC West race uh, as well. We got three teams at four and four, Arizona, San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles Rams are three and four. Uh, Brian, I mean, you know, I know Brandon Ayuk's not coming back, right? But Christian McCaffrey reportedly is going to be coming back sooner rather than later. Now are the San Francisco 49ers the best team positioned to win this this division uh, in, in your eyes? And, and we can take the homerism out of it because you also host a non-49er centric show and you have that that ability. Um, or is there another team you're eyeing in the NFC West that you think is maybe the favorite uh, developing here in the midway point of the year? Uh, every team in the division has looked quite mid so far this season. The, the ceiling for the 49ers is clearly the highest, though. Uh, and I think in the end, it's going to be 49ers, Seahawks battling this out. The Seahawks kind of, I have more and more questions about them every single week. Uh, the 49ers getting Christian McCaffrey back. They're licking their wounds on the bye. They'll probably have another trade, big or small, I'm not sure, but they're going to be active in the trade market, I'm sure. And and Drake Greenlaw potentially back in the second half of the year. I don't know if Talano Hufong is going to come back, but you know, the Niners have had a really nice young secondary step up with some young players, rookies, and second-year guys there. So, uh, I, I think the 49ers are going to be fine. I, I would actually like to see them add a, a defensive lineman more so than, a say, a wide receiver or something like that at the trade deadline. The Niners are going to be good. They're going to be fine. We've seen them have some awkward spells in past seasons and then rattle off you know, eight or nine wins in a row and go to the NFC Championship game. So I, I do think the 49ers are the best positioned right now, even though if the season ended today, they'd be the 10 seed in the NFC with you know all three uh teams at the top of the nfc west all at four and four records and then a half game back of them is the uh the los angeles rams i just, I just think the, the rams will fall off the cards will fall off and then eventually the seahawks will fall off but you know with with so many teams with such a head start like the vikings in those wild card positions and the niners uh don't have a good record against the conference right now either so they have to win the west i, I think there's gonna be one nfc west team in the playoffs and it's the team that wins the division so it's all about the nfc west right now for the 49ers i think they are the best team and, and that'll show out in the second half of the year and then of course we got the nfc south aaron freeman atlanta falcons are leading the nfc south just like everybody predicted at the beginning of the season the falcons are four and zero in the division right now um bro it, it, i i mean again mathematically the bucks are four and four saints are two and six Carolina's one and seven. They're Carolina. I mean, the Bucks are the closest, but their their defense is, is atrocious. Their offense is is wounded to say the the friendliest term I can say. Is there any way the Falcons lose this division? Well, you know, historically the Falcons have been never known to blow a lead, so it, it, it's definitely <laughs> not going to happen. Um, so, uh, you know, all jokes aside, they are obviously in a great position. They're going to have to mm -hmm. continue to rattle off some wins, win the games that they're supposed to win. And then, you know, to Peter's point, you know, going 
and, and facing the Minnesota Vikings and, and seeing sort of where they sort of stack in the NFC, uh, you know, going and beating a team like the Denver Broncos with a very good defense and, and a rookie quarterback and all that sort of stuff. So they, they have some playoff teams on their schedule. So we'll get to see the Falcons sort of stack up against some of these teams that are in the playoffs and then, you know, the AFC pretty weak playoff teams at, at the bottom of that. But, um, you know, I, I think the Falcons are in a good position, but we'll, we'll, we'll know more about this Falcons team in the coming weeks. Uh, and, and hopefully they can, you know, pull a Detroit Lions and, and beat the brakes off of the Cowboys this week. Sorry, Landon, mm. but you know, we'll see. We'll see. The Kirk I Cousins think revenge every... game. You like almost even glossed over. Yeah. We got the, that's major Kirk Cousins revenge factor on that one. Yeah. Definitely. I think pretty much everybody here would love to see the Falcons beat the brakes off of the Dallas Cowboys, except for Landon yeah, McCool, who's going to kick it. us off in the oh, next segment as we get into and the Vikings. Go get the, the Vikings, Aaron. Go get those guys. Best <laughs> games of week nine coming from the NFC on this episode of NFC Squad, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle all the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers, you can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you're watching a game, any NFL game, and in the middle of that game, you get yourself a hunch on a player performance or the overall game flow, you can go check out the latest stats, you can view the latest play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the exact same page where you can then place your bets, or you can make bets before games, like the Washington Commanders, who are three-and-a-half-point favorites on the road next week against the New York Giants to open the week. The largest spread of the week right now belongs to the Baltimore Ravens, who are nine-and-a-half-point favorites to beat the Denver Broncos in Baltimore with their new shiny wide receiver, Deontay Johnson, in tow. So go to FanDuel.com today and join up. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Wrapping up this week's NFC squad episode, it is week nine of the NFL season. So we've got a look at the best games in the NFC in week nine. And Landon McCool, you're going to get your opportunity to clap back at Aaron Freeman here. The Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> uh, if you want to. I don't know if you want to go that yeah, way. I don't know how much four, clapping back I'm going to be doing. But yeah. <laughs> three and four Dallas Cowboys visiting the five and three Atlanta Falcons, who are also five and one in the NFC, by the way. Uh, the line right now, Landon, has the Dallas Cowboys underdogs by nearly a field goal. What uh, what are your what are your initial thoughts on uh, a little bit of a crossover Thursday teaser? What are your initial thoughts on this road game for the for the Cowboys? Well, at this point for the Cowboys, I'm just fascinated to see who's lining up to play. I mean, you know, it, it's it's just such a roller coaster to see who's even playing. I mean, the Cowboys have been down to their fifth defensive end for you know I don't know three weeks now. Uh, maybe Micah Parsons practices this week. We'll find out tomorrow. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, maybe Deron Bland practices all week and doesn't play. Maybe he doesn't. And maybe you have a last minute scratch on game day because you have your starting running back uh, has a, has a 102 degree fever uh, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I think first who's going to play is, is a big thing for the Cowboys. And, and I think will continue to be a big thing, especially on defense for the Cowboys and on, on offense. It's, which version of the guys are gonna are gonna play? Because you know it, it just feels like the, the the Cowboys defense has had a lot of excuses for a lot of with a lot of injuries, but the Cowboys offense has none. And and the way that they've been playing has been terrible. Uh, and that includes Dak and uh, but in the CD at times. Uh, but I, I think you know it was just depressing watching the tape uh, uh, yesterday and, and and seeing a young left side of your offensive line start to kind of finally get it together a little bit and play some good football while you watch your old uh, right side of your offensive line start to fall off a cliff like they've got uh, anvils tied around their ankles. So mm. uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see exactly what form of the Dallas Cowboys show up in Atlanta, uh, and, and then we'll see exactly what kind of chance they have. Yeah, absolutely. A big chance, obviously, for the Atlanta Falcons to get another big win. Uh, second place in the division, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday night. That does not look like it's going to go well for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So an opportunity for the Falcons to put more space between them and their second place contenders. Louis DiBiase of Locked On Eagles. Let's kick over to Chicago at Arizona. Tyreek Stevenson could really use a game-winning pick <laughs> six off of Kyler Murray uh, in this matchup. But the Arizona Cardinals are favored by one and a half points. Uh Marvin Harrison Jr., right? Potentially Caleb Williams. 
uh, another potential matchup the NFL might get of, of marquee rookies. Uh, what do you what do you see going on in that one? And, and I have an extra bonus question for you. We talked about Jaden Daniels as an MVP candidate on this show now twice, and it hasn't come from me, uh, the guy that you could call a homer in that conversation. Is the rookie of the year competition dead before Halloween, or is there still an opportunity here for somebody to rise up and compete against Jane Daniels, who's probably going to win his sixth rookie of the week award uh, this week? Yeah, especially if Chicago doesn't go on some miraculous run to where they get back in the division hunt, make a wild card, and Jane Daniels keeps winning. I don't know who else is really coming close. Neighbors, Harrison, like they've produced this year, but their teams aren't like winning to the level maybe that the award will go to them. And again, quarterbacks kind of get the tiebreaker in a lot of those situations. That's actually the game that I've circled that I want to watch the most on Sunday outside of Eagles Jaguars because kind of a litmus test matchup. It's like, all right, let's see who the Arizona Cardinals are at four and four Jekyll and Hyde week after week. They're in first place right now in the West. Are they legitimate contenders though? Are they a serious team to make the playoffs or has it just been based on schedule? Same thing kind of with Chicago Two you know, young teams with good, young quarterbacks, but at the same time, very up and down. So I think that's a fun matchup to see, like, all right, let's see who these teams really are because it's, again, been so Jekyll and Hyde for both sides. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, Detroit Green Bay. I mean, who who better to talk about this matchup, right, than Peter Bukowski locks on Packers. Peter, what's, what's up with Jordan Love, and uh, what's up with the chances that the Packers beat the Detroit Lions this weekend? Well, I, it depends on if Jordan Love is going to play, uh, and, and, and that we don't know. Uh, he dodged a, a serious injury. It was it was hard to know for sure uh, in a situation where he's dealing with the injured MCL, still has the brace on that leg, and he lands awkwardly. And I think if you're a Packers fan, you're going, okay, please don't be a re-injury of that MCL. And then I think the secondary concern is when you hear groin, mm. first of all, be cool. Can you- Second of all, uh, after that, you go, okay, don't be a sports hernia. Because that's that that's the like creeping little thought of like, you know, there there have been players over the years who have been initially diagnosed with groin injuries. It turns out to be a sports hernia. You got you got to have surgery on it, and then you know you're out the rest of the season. Thankfully for him and for everyone, that's not the case. But whether or not he's going to play this weekend, I, I don't know. I, I think though you can make the case uh, that a hundred percent of Malik Willis is better than sixty five percent of Jordan Love given the way that Matt LaFleur calls the game when Malik Willis is in there. That's just a and, fact. I mean, and I think that, that Matt LaFleur, is, he's, he's positioned himself now as one of the truly elite offensive minds in the game, a, as a play caller, as a play designer. When we saw it in the, in the do-or-die spot, I mean, Trevor Lawrence played awesome in the second half of that game, and I don't expect a lot of you to have watched that game, like, because, I, why? Why would you? Malik Willis against Trevor Lawrence, not exactly marquee TV, but, Trevor Lawrence played terrific. They get down, they, they tie the ball game and, and the Packers need it second, second and medium. And they go to a play action play that was not in the game plan that Malik Willis has probably never practiced as a green Bay Packer. And he hits Jaden Reed in stride for a 51 yard gain that sets up the game winning field goal. The Packers believe they can win with Malik Willis now against the best team in the league. Probably that's going to be a tall order, but uh, they think they can. They think they can win any game with Malik Willis. Uh, right. If Jordan Love can play, I'm still not going to pick the Packers. But uh, I, like, I think they they have a much better chance. Obviously, at home, I think this yeah. defense has some can do some things that can make uh, Jared Goff uncomfortable. Uh, but right now, this this is just a banged up team. Like Jair Alexander dealing with an injury, rookie phenom Evan Williams, who I think right now is is one of the favorites to win defensive rookie of the year with Jared Verse. Probably those two guys are the front runners. Still there. hasn't watched a second of Eagles um, football because Quinnon Mitchell is going to win the, the defensive the, rookie of the year. It's clear, Pete, like you're telling on yourself. We understand. Evan, Evan Williams is like the number two graded safety in the league by pro football. I'm an Oregon fan. Like, you're telling um, me. I know. Like, like I'm just saying. Um, And, and the Packers defense is going to finish the year with good statistics. So it's just a different thing. But that's okay. Um. So this is it, it. It is a fun situation for the Packers to be in because it's it's all house money. It's all house money, yeah. and and so if you lose, well, Jordan Jordan Love was hurt or Malik Willis, um, and and if they win, like Matt Lafleur is the coach of the year. I don't know what else you, yeah. there is even to talk about at that point. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Can I, 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 I will not make a history. Go ahead, bro. I just I just wanted to ask here if Malik Willis was going to fall in the long line of Cowboys quarterbacks that was going to lose to the 49ers in the playoffs. 
Yeah. Packers quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I, I think the more interesting question is how much draft capital are the Jets going to give up to trade for Malik Willis? Ooh. That's a Ooh. that's a that's a fun topic for another episode. Um, I, I don't want to make a habit of plugging outside network shows, but the QB School on YouTube. If you don't know about that, check that out. They did, or he did, awesome. I should say, a great breakdown of the Packers, both quarterback uh, film. So highly recommend you go go check that out and just become a subscriber because it's cool stuff over there. Brian Peacock, um, potential rookie of the year, defense rookie of the year in your division. Los Angeles Rams visit the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, what do you think is going to come out of this game? And then the the add on question I have for you, which team do the 49ers need to lose or want to lose more uh, in this matchup uh rookie of the year from the nfc west I'm, i assume you're talking about right guard dominic pooney of the san francisco 49 <laughs> hey. well, he's been hey. really good yeah. he's been really good you know. he's been in love come on uh sorry which which game are you uh, asking about <laughs> that's brian didn't listen to anything outside of that rams at seahawks uh seahawks are important. one and a half point underdogs at home uh, she, uh, Seahawks all day. Seahawks at home. Uh, they're they're going to be angry. The the Rams showed a, a nice little bit of um, the Rams really screwed up is what they did because they were about to go into like full on sell mode and they went and won a game and they mm -hmm. made themselves think that they're going to be contenders because of that win and then they're going to go lose to the Seahawks and then they're going to be on the fence about it and they're not going to sell and they're just going to continue to be um a team that that needs to hit the reset button hard and and didn't sell pieces that could have allowed them to do that better um the seattle seahawks have their problems but it looks like they escaped major injury for dk metcalf which is which is really important um they're getting some of their defenders back that have been really banged up on that side of the ball this season's made, made it really hard for them to uh, employ the defense that they've they've wanted to uh, I just think the Seahawks are a better team top to bottom. It's in Seattle. Uh, I like the Seahawks here. And I do, like I said earlier, I think it's going to end up being a two team race with the Seahawks and the 49ers in the West. All right. Big oh. shout out to, to Brian Peacock, Locked On 49ers, for coming through when his team's on a bye, not, not taking a day off here, uh, the Locked On <laughs> Podcast Network. Gino Camilleri, the games, those are the top games. But I do want to finish this off. What, what, what group conversation would not be uh, complete without bold predictions? So let's get a, a week nine. Bold prediction, NFC bold prediction, if we can keep it in the in the conference from Locked On Eagles host Gino Camilleri. Well, we started talking about the NFC North as potentially a four-team race, and then we got it down to a three-team race, and then Peter said it's a two-team race. I think Detroit is going to beat the ever-living crap out of the Green Bay Packers, and it is going to be a one-team race, and you're going to learn that having two quarterbacks is the same as having no quarterbacks, Pete. You got to be humbled a little bit when it comes to this conversation. Jared Goff, you've been mm. saying a lot of bad things about him. Jared Goff has some things to say to you, Peter Bukowski, and you're going to see him this Sunday. We Man, need, we need, not, 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 since, he's been he has it. not since he's been in Detroit, he hasn't, but. We need a Packers we'll Eagles game this week. Let's just let's just flex the Literally. flex the entire damn schedule and get it. Get I mean, a it might happen. Game. It already happened. We, we already saw who won that game. This well, period. I mean, you know, we need, we need ice, another on one. On an right, ice right. rink, on an ice rink in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable stuff. All right. By the way, Quinn Mitchell Freeman. not even the best rookie corner in the in the division right now. That's oh true my goodness. But that's a different. And Peter didn't even get to have a play that game. Let's get a bold prediction from Aaron Freeman. Locked on Falcons. To round out this week nine NFC squad up, so. I, I I can't cut the promo like G, like Gino just did uh, on on Peter Bukowski, but you know we, we started this thing giving love for the Washington Commanders. Let's you know let, let's let me represent my girl Patricia Trena and go with the bold prediction: New York Giants mm. taking down the Washington Commanders. Wow! At home, mm. that defense shutting down again. I, I told you at the top, I'm I'm pushing an anti Cliff Kingsbury in the second half of the season agenda, <laughs> and I need it to come true. So that's my bold prediction. The Giants defense is going to take care of Cliff Kingsbury and the Jaden Daniels yeah. and, and devastate the high that Washington is on this week. And, you know, give some love to, for Patricia and Lock on Giants this week as well. Listen, we officially hit the midway point of the Washington Commanders schedule at halftime of week nine against the New York Giants. So there's your division dividing line, Aaron. If, if the commanders come out hot in the first half and flat in the second half and lose that game, there's the beginning of your narrative. And look, the Washington Commanders have some left tackle questions. Uh, rookie left tackle. Didn't even take a step in the concussion protocol last week. We'll see what he does this week. Cornelius Lucas, the veteran that filled in fully for him. That's a long story. Uh, hurt his ankle. So we might be looking at Trent Scott, your your third tackle on, on, the, on the option list, playing up against that Giants defense. So, I mean, not outside the realm of possibility, of course. 
Locked on uh, Giants host Patricia Trana and I will have a crossover Thursday to talk all about all those stuff. In the meantime, thank all of you hosts for joining me today. Thank everybody out there for joining us here on the NFC Squad episode for week nine. We'll be here every single week, and each of us are going to be here for you every single day, bringing you the latest on all your favorite NFL teams. So make sure you're following all of these fine hosts and subscribe so you don't miss a minute of their great coverage for all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.